Three, two, one. Hey, Internet friends, this is Magic Brad with Synergy Cafe and the Synergy Collaborative Synergy Lifestyle Academy. And I've got Elizabeth Pampalone. Are you there, Elizabeth? I'm here. How are you today? I'm doing good. How are you? It's good, but it's, it's, it was overcast. Now the sun came out a little bit, but you're down in Florida, right? Yes, it's very sunny and very hot here. <laughs> Always have sun. Is it, is it muggy there too because of the water? It gets a little humid sometimes, yeah. Today, not so bad, but it's still hot, almost 100. That's what we got. Minnesota, you got 10,000 lakes, so we got a lot of water, too. But oh, yeah. You guys got it all the time on both sides down there. Mm-hmm. <laughs> <laughs> How long have you lived down there? 13 years. Okay. And where were you before that? I grew up in Ohio, in Cincinnati. And you just, is it cold there, so you want to go down to Florida where it's hot all the time? I know, I know. It wasn't uh, my first choice, but I did end up, I landed in Jacksonville, and uh, actually I started my business here 13 years ago, so it ended up being pretty good for me. Is that what keeps you there? Yeah, I actually um, found a husband here, of all things, so I got That'll married, <laughs> and we have family down here, so yeah, we kind of we kind of stick around for the family. Well, that makes sense. That's why we came back from we were, went to Asheville for a couple of years and moved back to Minneapolis because my wife missed the family. So mm -hmm. family magnets. Yep. Many, <laughs> you got kids? No, no, I don't have any kids yet, but I have a lot of brothers and sisters. <laughs> oh, those, those kids. Yeah. <laughs> the ones that I helped, you know, raise those kids. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> Sibling offsprings. Mm -hmm. <laughs> So I looked a little bit about your business and it looks like you work in like the nonprofit world. Is that correct? Yes, I have a business called Beyond the Cause and it's a marketing firm that focuses on nonprofits and small businesses, helping them with their marketing. So do you kind of like merge the two together? Like uh, say for example, Target Corporation wants to do a community event. So they bring in like a, nonprofit where they help uh, rescue dogs and it gives that warm fuzzy thing so their marketing doesn't seem like it's all about money? Well we actually do something a little similar but we don't actually merge the two together. Usually we work with the small business to make their brands more connected to their audience so that it doesn't seem all about money and we work on the psychology of the marketing itself mm -hmm. and then with the nonprofits we bring in, bring in more of a business aspect because a lot of times the nonprofit side has a lot of warm and fuzzy and not so much business. And so we try to help them realize that they can bring in enough funds to operate their, you know, I nonprofits see. and give more away. Um, so we kind of bring a little balance to both worlds. You're, you're an equalizer or, yes. a, or a harmonizer <laughs> or something like that. I've never really liked the concept of like balance. You like they talk about uh, work-life balance. Because yeah. I don't think anything balances. I think it's always in flux. It's always moving around like a teeter-totter. You know, it never really balances. It kind of, it's in more in harmony, I guess, might be the term. Yeah, I think, I think that's an, an accurate thing is, is harmonizing. Because when you're harmonizing with someone and you're singing, you're mm -hmm. both singing at the same time. So things are happening all at the same time rather than having one and the other. And, you know, so, so yes, things just have to be working all together. And so that's what we try and help small businesses and nonprofits do is realize their strengths and weaknesses and then build those weaknesses and, and then also play more to their strengths as well. Yeah, I've noticed that uh, like some people that are more the, I don't know if it's the left or the right brain that's more emotional. Is it the right brain that's more? I think so, yes. Yeah, because the, like the artists and the creatives, mm -hmm. they're really good at what they do and then you know they create this beautiful painting or whatever that they took a, spent a lot of time on and and they, somebody wants to buy it, but they don't want to charge too much because, oh, I had fun doing it. I really don't want to charge too much. And I had the frame in the basement. I bought that years ago. And I really don't need to charge that much. And then all of a sudden their rent comes due and they went, I don't have enough money to pay rent. <laughs> I actually worked out. with an artist a few years ago and she had all those same things she was telling me all the time. And what we ended up doing with her business was um, I, I said to her, you know, well, what about all these paintings? They were all over her house in stacks, you know, sitting against walls and they were just everywhere. And she said, they're just paintings I never sold. And I said, 
well, how can we move them? What's, what's going to make the move? She goes, I don't know. I've tried everything. And they were beautiful and they were amazing. But again, she didn't want to charge too much. So I said, let's do this. Why don't we create collections just like they do in the fashion world? So we took a bunch of paintings. We collected them into a collection of like 12 or 10. Then we put a price tag on them and we said they're only available for six weeks or eight weeks. And then they were gone. We were taking them off and she was going to donate them to whoever, like charities and different companies and things like that. And she was like, well, what's that going to do? And I said, it's going to create urgency that these are only here for a short time. And she just thought that was the most brilliant thing. And she did it. And she ended up selling almost half of the ones that she had in that collection. Whereas before they were just sitting in her house collecting dust. So you did them as bundles? Yeah, well, we didn't oh. sell them as a pack, but we sold them and saying, this is the spring collection. And so there's only 10 paintings on her oh, website I instead of having every painting she's ever made on her website. So we really just narrowed down the selection and also gave them the sense of urgency that in eight or six weeks, oh, brilliant. they're going to be gone. <laughs> so you bundle them by season, kind of like. Yes. Yeah. yeah. Oh, cool. That's, that's smart. <laughs> See, that's what's cool about, uh, you know, having a marketing mindset where you can just tweak a couple of things. It's all about packaging. Like, um, well, I use the analogy of Coca-Cola. All it is is sugar water with bubbles in it, you know? <laughs> but when you package it up about Coke adds life and excitement and the beach and water and refreshment and all of a sudden it's got value to it and people will pay five, six bucks for a, Coca a can of Coke. <laughs> yep. And then some of the companies even do the um, white labeled for the grocery stores. Sure. And they mark, they make the same product and they just put it in a different bottle and you might pay a dollar for it when you go to Walmart, but you pay $4 for it when you're buying the brand. And so, it's the exact you know, same sometimes, product. Yeah, exact same product. So it's interesting how if you, if you're aware of that process, that you know your mindset can change around marketing itself and also a lot of the companies that make food products there's only about five or six companies that control a majority of the brands so it's very interesting yeah another thing that is kind of interesting because i'm in the entertainment that's like what got me into business i started doing magic that's where the magic brad name comes from <laughs> and it's like if you don't charge that much and someone's got you know significant money they don't think you're very good so mm -hmm. you might have to raise your prices just so that they think you're, you're capable. And even though you do the exact same presentation you do at a kitty's birthday party, it's just for adults. And now you're wearing a, you know, a Armani suit as opposed to a clown costume. It's just the packaging of it. And it changes the perceived value because, you know, if someone's wealthy, they don't want to hire somebody for $150. They want to tell their friends, yeah, this guy was 1500 bucks. You know? Well, it's just like the car companies. I mean, the Toyota makes a luxury car. Ford makes a luxury car. There's a lot of car companies that regular old car companies that everybody buys that make luxury cars with the same engines. <laughs> well, they just have different packaging. <laughs> a good example is the Toyota Camry and the Lexus. Yep. It's basically the exact same car, only Lexus is a little tighter and, you know, classier. and A little fancier, has a few more bells and whistles. <laughs> yeah. So it's a packaging thing. So how long have you been doing this business then? Because you, did you just start it down there when you're in Jacksonville? Yeah, so I've actually been building websites for about 20 years. And I started my first business, which was a computer repair company. I would go to people's homes and fix their computers. I started that in 2007, so 13 years ago. Oh, wow. So is, is a lot of this new business, is it about like digital marketing? Yeah, so when I had my um, firm that did the computer repair, I learned a lot about how to market a business. And I ended up telling a lot of people how I did that and how I was successful and realized that I could kind of go back to my roots as a web designer because it was all marketing that I had done, just from learning it myself, trial and error over the years. And once I started packaging that together and speaking on it, um, I realized that I had another firm that I could start so I ended up selling the computer repair business to one of our employees and I was able to continue doing all the web design and all the stuff I really like to do, the fun stuff for me, um, with other businesses and helping them grow their businesses just like I had done with the computer repair business. And that was probably about eight, seven years ago, six years ago, something like that. Well, it's so cool to be able to innovate and kind of shift and, you know, because your interests change a little bit. 
and you get to, that's one of the wonderful things about being self-employed is you can make some adjustments, you know? Absolutely. <laughs> well, that's kind of like what I did with Absolute Marketing. I developed a system called Absolute Marketing because I realized that I was teaching people the same five things over and over and, and I kept seeing a recurring themes there. So I created Absolute Marketing and I realized also that I was doing a lot of extra work and having a lot of extra stress for something that I could actually do in one day. So the Absolute Marketing system allows us to create a brand in a day, include writing an ebook, create a website in a day from start to finish, 12 months of social media posts in a day, 12 months of blogging in a day, and 12 months of email marketing in a day. And it's a five-day system that I call Absolute Marketing. So see if I'm getting this right. It's almost, uh, you because a brand's got a different, feel to it, different vibe to it. You can take this basically the same kind of, not ex not same content, but the same flavor and like just change it from blue to change it to red and have a different vibe to it. So you can, it's almost a template. Well, the branding is where we actually work with the, um, the client to create who they are and not just in a visual sense with a logo, but really to de dive deep into who they are is and what they're doing for people, who they're serving and why they're actually doing all the work that they're doing. Um, so we create the messaging around the brand. So like when you see the Apple logo, you see the simplicity of it, you just know what it is about. You understand the company without just having to see the logo um, because they've done a lot around their messaging, around how they present themselves as a whole. So that's what we do for other companies. And we also help them write an ebook that they can put on their website as an opt-in so that they can get email addresses and start building their email list. And that's just day one. And then I realized that I could build a website in a day if the person was there with me, giving me the feedback right away and helping me write everything like they should. Um, and so we just, I just kept doing it one day on this, one day on this, one day on this. And we developed that five day system and it helps people do basically create an entire year's worth of marketing in five days. And then they're done. They don't have to worry about it. And they can actually do the things they like to do. Like, go and get clients to perform magic for and things like that. <laughs> well, that's what I've always said too, is that you shouldn't like the, the person that has the business shouldn't be spending all the time doing the marketing. They should be doing customer service because that's yes. what they're supposed to be doing. So <laughs> and it, selling. It sounds, you have to sell. <laughs> it, it sounds like uh, it's kind of like a, I like to use a car analogy, the wheels and the frame and the engine, it's all basically the same thing. Now you put the body on it and it looks a lot different. So you could have a, yeah. a little um, economy car and then just put a truck body on it and it looks totally different now. So the, the, mm -hmm. might have to boost the engine up a little bit. And so I, I, get, I get what you're doing. That's pretty cool to be able to head. And it works, time, for, hmm? yeah, it works for small businesses and nonprofits. That's the other thing is that it, like you said, those foundational pieces, they're the same and you just got to use them to your advantage, you know, when you go through them. Yeah, to me, there's basically three things you got to have leads, relationships, and you know, make sales. So it's plant the seed, nurture the plant, harvest the fruit. And that's mm -hmm. the same. Like, even a nonprofit needs to make sales. Yep. <laughs> it doesn't seem like sales because we didn't make any money. We're a nonprofit. It's called well, donation. You did too. <laughs> that's right. It's, instead of a price tag, it's a donation. Mm -hmm. <laughs> or an, instead of an investment, it's a donation. Mm -hmm. Semantics. <laughs> so do, do you work in any specific um, like niches or, or, or um, markets like, like uh, health and wellness or medical or any, any specific industries? I've actually not narrowed down my industries per se, but I have narrowed down my demographics. So my best customers are usually mostly women and some men who are between the ages of 40 and 65, and they're starting that second business, or maybe they've been in business a long time, or maybe they're just starting and they're just starting that second career, you know, they're starting over. And so we really are able to help those people because, you know, a lot of younger people who are even younger than I am, they have a lot of this down and we get some younger people, but not, not too many. Um, and they kind of know what they're doing. They can kind of navigate that world a lot better. But then I find these people who have all this knowledge and all this experience who are in that 40 to 60 range, and they just, they just hit a wall when it comes to the digital marketing space. And so we're there to just make it simple and easy 
and get it all done. And then they can actually go and do all that stuff that they know how to do, which is really neat. Oh, I totally get that because I'm 63. I just turned 63 on the 19th. So happy oh, birthday. Happy to birthday. Me. <laughs> but my brain does not function the way that someone that grew up with a screen in their hand. You know, the younger generation, they, they're swiping this and that and the, the texting, how fast they can do that. I can't, my brain just doesn't do that kind of thing. So it's that kind of thing. Like if I had, if I wanted to start a business, it's a whole new tool set. Why not hand those over to someone like you that knows how to use that wrench? Because I don't know. Exactly. How to, <laughs> it's, it, it blows my mind. I remember um, my wife's son when he was younger, he was in the back seat and we gave him both of our phones and he was texting each phone. He would text this phone out with his thumb. <laughs> mind boggling how you can do that. I get, I get glazed over for it. So it's always good to be able to outsource. I mean, I, that saves a business owner. And I, I'm assuming that some people that are just starting are afraid to outsource because they don't know. First off, they don't know what they're supposed to be outsourcing, but it's uh, delegate, delegate and automate. My, Absolutely. My and it, it can be a little scary because a lot of people have also been burned already. We get a lot of people that have come to us that have had that bad experience with someone who didn't really know what they were doing, or maybe were too new to the business themselves and didn't really have a good tool set, you know, or process. So we really, you know, take the time to educate them and bring them along and answer as many questions as we can, because it's not a cheap process. It's not something you're just going to, Oh, that was just $200. No big deal. It's a big investment. And so we know that. And we also value, you know, our clients time and their money because we know that for every, dollar you know you've done something to earn that dollar and we don't want to just take advantage of the fact that you have those dollars in your hand um we want to be able to provide value for that and make you feel like we're not just gonna you know take it and run because that's not what we're here to do well, otherwise we like wouldn't to, have a business that's why i like to do these videos like this because you can actually see the person whereas you just get these little emails with someone that has a graphic right. image on there and you don't know if they're real or not and because there are, there have been a lot of people that have been stung, like, you know, I'll build you a website for $150. And they just take a Wix website. and They don't really do anything to it much. Right. Know? So there's right. a lot of scammy stuff out there. And that's why I like to keep this stuff open and transparent. Like I said, if the cat jumps up on the desk, that's a good thing. Then we know you yeah. got a cat. It's not a green screen here. This is a real deal back here. Right. <laughs> well, I don't like to do these too long because people do have that commodity of time. You know, because yeah. they're supposed to be working. <laughs> but is, do you have anything that you can offer people to kind of get to know who you are and how you are, how you work, like a little uh, workbook or a white white paper or something like that they can get? Yeah. So I use a ton of tools in my business, and they've been very helpful for me. Some of them are free, some of them are paid, but um, I have all these free trials as well that I offer on my website at beyondthecause.co forward slash tools. And I also have my social media workbook there. Um, it is a paid workbook, but um, I do like to just offer those tools links because sometimes it just takes so much time to search for the right tool that you're, you just need an email marketing platform that's just going to work correctly, right? Or you might just need that terms and conditions and policy so that your website is in compliance and you just need that one thing. That's the only thing that's left on your list. And so time, taking time to search for the right one, it, it's a lot of, very time consuming. So I've done all that work. Um, I've done years of that work and I've found the right tools um, for me and uh, for a lot of my clients. So I put them all together in one list and some of them have discounts and things like that. Um, some of them are just free, which is fun. And they're all at beyondthecause.co forward slash tools. That's easy to find slash tools. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, wonderful. Well, Elizabeth, I appreciate you taking the time to be on Synergy Cafe. I will get this beamed up to the universe, and then I'll send you some links. And if you could help propagate it out to the universe, we'll uh, Absolutely. we'll see what the internet can do with those little spiders that crawl around and find keywords. Sounds good. Thank you so much for having me. Thank you. Peace.